Welcome. I'm just happy to see that jersey behind you, Chris. It was trying to pry that beauty piece of history away from the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. The reason why Bonfire Sports didn't have game day Winnipeg first thing this morning. But here we are. We got the technical glitches yeah. straightened out and we're ready to go. The only thing that I'm missing right now is a replica Walby burger. A big burger sitting on that desk. But that's it. I threw my wife out. Well, I didn't throw her out. I asked her nicely if she'd leave for lunchtime. Uh, so I don't want her to get in trouble with work. She is taking her lunchtime right now. And uh, we're able to get together, as you said, because of... We usually do this earlier. Yeah. But we had a few tech issues, and we got them straightened out because you're the guru. You don't understand how to do that. Mm. Learning I, on the fly. being Santa, granted your wish to make this microphone work. So hopefully, fingers crossed, people... We can come out now and discuss the great game that will be tomorrow, where Bombers are probably no, it's tonight. Are they're they're yeah tonight. That's right. <laughs> we usually do this two days before, one day before. Yeah. Do you know what? Uh, what they're they're favored by like fourteen points. Yeah. In Edmonton, and yet you remember the first game. Yeah, you said the score flattered them. Thirty-seven twenty-two. It was close until the interception for a pick six. And the Willie uh, Jefferson strip sack where Big Hill took it in for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Those two plays, back-to-back -back series, really clinched the game for the Bombers. Now, last week, obviously, uh, the you know the last game they played where they were in Winnipeg, they got 30-3. to three. That was a dismantling. That was just awful. Yeah. Awful, awful, awful. One of the reasons I think that Trevor Harris right now is looking for maybe a new home. Yeah. The Edmonton Elks, uh, there are reports out there that they have Trevor Harris on the trade block. Chris, we do know how hot the seat is under general manager Brock Sunderland, yes. probably head coach uh, Jamie Elizondo as well. When those three took over in Edmonton, following the departure uh, of Scott Milanovic, who, who took a job with um, uh, the Indianapolis Colts to be uh, to be their, uh, to be their quarterback, coach. quarterback coach. Thank you. Sorry, I just... Uh, had something jump on the screen here, but, um, well, you got a grasshoppers in your room or what? Yeah. Like, I don't know what's going on here. I got to call Samsung, see what's going on. The technical, uh, ghosts continue to haunt bonfire sports. Well, they should. We got, <laughs> we got it straightened out, but, but when Scott Milanovic left the, the conversation yeah. around this was, look at this. We got a trio coming who were all familiar with one another, general manager, head coach, franchise quarterback. And now just, Two months into this shortened season, Trevor Harris is a healthy scratch. He won't even back up Taylor Cornelius against the Blue Bombers tonight. It'll be Dakota Prukup coming off the practice roster. Yeah. Harris has gone through injury this year. Now reports that he is on the trade block. Jamie Elizondo maybe has lost the room. Brock Sunderland, culture clashes, Kenny Stafford. Um, yeah, the, the franchise quarterback, like things have gone yeah. from bad to worse to even more worse in Edmonton in really short order. Chris, what do you make of all of this news happening in Edmonton? A couple of things. One, I, I always look at, uh, I listened to, uh, Jimmy Elizondo's press conference this morning and he was talking about that. He really felt bad. He had to wrestle with this decision about Trevor Harris for the whole week. He pulled him late in the game in the last uh, the last loss to Winnipeg. He said, you know, I, I, he just wasn't productive. Put uh, Taylor Cornelius in. Uh, I, I just think that's one of those things he says, you know, he, I thought it was really heartfelt. He said, the worst thing is, is I don't want to lose a friendship over this. Like he was close with him in Ottawa when he played with Ottawa with him there too. He was yeah. their offensive coordinator. But obviously a, a proud man like Trevor Harris, who's now demoted and still feels he's healthy and willing to contribute and yeah. can play at the level he believes he can play at, uh, is looking to go to another team. And I think that he's probably forcing the hand of Brock Sunderland, who I got to wonder, did Brock ever play football? I don't know. The reason I asked that, I don't mean to dog Brock, but I just look at the situation in Winnipeg where you've got Kyle who played, Wade who played, Mike who played. I think they understand that. I'm not saying they understand it better, but it seems like they understand about the importance of keeping veterans together. And one of the things I thought Brock did was he let too many guys go. Uh, and I don't like the line that it was, they weren't a culture fit. Uh, you're but veteran. You can't have enough veterans for every rookie. Uh, Cal Murphy used to say our old head coach said for every rookie you start, you lose a game. Uh, you know, they just got a lot of rookies and a lot of newcomers. And as you say, some turmoil uh, is that locker room divided. I don't know. 
I mean, obviously, when you have a, uh, you know, a Trevor Harris playing there, and now they basically are not dressing him, you're putting all your, you know, all your eggs in the uh, Cornelius basket. Yep. Will that be uh, something? That, no, listen, I, I, listen, he's young. He is more mobile. There's no doubt about that. So I think that had something to do with it as well because of the fact that they know that he, you know, he has a lot more maneuverability in the pocket, especially against that bomber defense and the pass rush. So we're going to have to see how that plays out tonight. But, uh, boy, I tell you what, it sure makes some uh, interesting fodder to talk about. Two things I'll respond to that. I want to talk about Trevor Harris versus Taylor Cornelius and, and just the football decision. Obviously, there's more behind this than meets the eye. Those reports uh, coming out today about Trevor Harris being on the trade block also yeah. mentioned how this was to keep Trevor Harris healthy in case a trade does come to fruition. So, you know, he's not banged up against a, a ferocious Blue Bombers defensive front. Let's talk about Brock Sunderland. You, you mentioned, you know, did he hold play? It, or, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. What? Are you telling me they're not playing Trevor Harris because they're worried about him getting hurt? Yes. That's what, what that's what, what the reports you, 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 that's what the report says. Kill on your desk? That's what the report says. Well, who, who, yeah, come on, man. No, you you don't have if you're paying a guy five hundred plus, you don't sit him because you're worried about him getting hurt. Well, that that leads. A good rush. I, I agree with you. I I think this decision right. is strange. Good ass, Nikki, toast. Absolutely, this decision is strange to put it diplomatically. Uh, yeah, you yeah. go, you were playing the best team in the CFL. Your season yeah. is slipping between the tra- cracks. You're two and six. You've played this team twice already. If, if there's a chance to beat the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, it's when you play them three times in a month, they can probably figure that out. So why go on from Trevor Harris? It's not like Taylor Cornelius has thrown the lights out. He has been okay. He has thrown like you and I talked about prior to his first start of the season, and that was with Trevor Harris a little bit banged up in, in that 37-22 Bombers win in Edmonton. Yeah. Trailer, Taylor Cornelius throws picks late in Three games. Picks. And, yeah. and you know, he continues to do it. He had two in the fourth quarter against the Blue Bombers uh, in, in that yeah. first matchup. He's done it again in relief of, uh, yeah. of, of Trevor Harris. Why bench Trevor Harris? They clearly want to move him. It, it, it's a desperation well, move. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Brock Sunderland, I need to go back to what you were saying about him. He is a proven, effective general manager. Yeah, he brings well, in exactly. talent. He brought in Greg Ellingson and Jarrell yeah. Walker. Um, he brought in uh, Derek Moncrief and, and offered, you know, made him the highest paid linebacker in the CFL when, when you know, NFL opportunities dried up for him. He stabilized yeah. their defensive backfield after losing Nick Taylor and Josh Johnson, coincidentally, but at different times to the Blue Bombers over the yeah. last 24 months. He's made some good moves, but what's happening right now, I understand the criticism. You can start with Eddie Steele and you can go to almost every other pundit in the CFL. When things are this bad, like they are yeah. at Edmonton, you have to look to the top. You have to look at yeah. an unvaccinated individual on a team that now has to play three games in seven days late well, in the season. he got a medical exemption. He got a medical I, I get, exemption. Sure, sure. I know, I know. We, we, we're, you know um, we're not, we're, listen, we're not trying to conduct a witch hunt here. But I'll say this. I, absolutely in, in not. Taylor Cornelius's, in Taylor Cornelius' uh, behalf, the first game he get, played against Winnipeg and Edmonton when he had, threw the three picks, he didn't even get a practice because he got hurt. Trevor Harris got hurt Wednesday. Right. Which McCall had one pre, uh, like a pregame talk. That's all he had was pregame. He didn't take any first team snaps. Now he's got a couple games under his belt. Well, he's got one anyway, one in a bit. Right. I think he's better prepared. Um, but having said that, I was going to read, I got some stats here, and I think this is pretty crazy. Cornelius, 32 offensive positions, possession, excuse me, five touchdowns. Trevor Harris, 82 offensive possessions. Only six touchdowns. Do you know who number one is in the league? Our own boy, Zach Kolaris. 23 touchdown drives. Yeah, no surprise. Not surprising. That's why he's the front runner for an MOP, but that's another story. The Trevor Harris story, I think, is still going to be a hot topic after this game. But who do you – you hear it. Hey, listen. Who do you trade for? Listen, Montreal needs a quarterback. No doubt about it. Yep. I that, don't that think did not look Toronto. good. That did not look good for Vernon Adams Jr. in the shoulder. No, he's going to be out for at least six weeks, maybe more. Now, so I, Kahari Jones would probably take a big jump on him. 
uh, the head coach of Montreal. Now, what about Ottawa? Uh, I know they've got that uh, Duck Evans or Devlon, whatever his name, the NFL guy. Oh, Duck Hodges. Yeah. Uh, hey, Caleb Evans looks pretty good. They like this Caleb wouldn't Evans. Don't you want to give uh, him some experience? Not in a rush. You got to give him you some know, experience. And obviously, who's going to assume? Here's the other thing. Who's going to assume Trevor Harris's salary? He's due a big bonus. That's a huge thing, guys. Yeah. This, you know, you hate. That's one thing about the CFL. Well, he's due the bonus but, in hell, February. So if the team knows. needs him this yeah. year. Yeah, I know. But that's a problem. I mean, uh, there's no guarantees. It's not like the NFL where you got guaranteed contracts. Uh, you know, here you get a housing allowance, you get a, you know, whatever, a uh, and travel it's allowance, and you get a salary and, and, and a couple bonuses. And it's prorated but, because of the shortened season, right? And it's prorated, exactly. Yeah. So I hate to see it happen to anybody. Uh, I'm hoping that Trevor Harris uh, ends up on his feet, lands on his feet, and ends up playing, and maybe he'll come back. Maybe You, you never know what's going to happen because – God forbid something happens to one of the two other quarterbacks playing for Edmonton and he has to come back in. Now, if that happened and you're Trevor Harris, are you disgruntled? Because you're already being yes. thrown to the trash pile. Now they pull you back if something happens. Are you playing with as much love as for this team as you had before? I don't see it. Well, you know, the reality is we don't know who demanded this trade. Is it Brock Sunderland saying we're ready to move on from Trevor Harris? I like Taylor Cornelius. Or is it Trevor Harris saying, I don't like this situation. I want out of Edmonton. That's unclear right now. Um, well, to, yeah. to go back to the Elks, it's not like they're a competitive football team right now. They have no. lost to the Ottawa Red Blacks twice. Okay. Yeah. Like they cannot even compete right now, despite having some of the best players in the league on their roster. That's not a coach's problem. That's a cultural problem. That's all I'm saying okay, is no, when things no, no. are when things are this no. bad, yeah, you can look at the coach. Yeah, you can look at the players. You can look at the coordinators. In my opinion, when it's this bad, when it's gone this far, you have to look at the top. That's all I'm saying. Yep. I'm saying this. You, you're probably right, DB. There's a bit of culture in there, and I believe that. I do believe that. I also talked about earlier about getting rid of veterans. That's a, that's a huge thing. You need a veteran presence. Uh, and then, then it's just, you know, you just, it's such a tough thing when you're trying to build something in a, in a team like Edmonton mm -hmm. and you just have so many changes. And that, when I talk about their offensive line, obviously now with Sir Vincent Rogers out, now you bring in, you know, you got, uh, you know, Justin Renfrew getting a, a chance to play right tackle. He says he's finally healthy. First game against Winnipeg, he's ever healthy. I thought they were I kicking. Mean, now I thought they were kicking Saxlid. Yeah, I thought they were kicking Saxlid out to right tackle. Yeah, I know yeah. Saxlid. They got him lifted at left tackle now. So oh, left tackle. Again, right, right. Six of the first eight games, Edmonton's had a different offensive line lineup, mm -hmm. and we know what continuity and chemistry of an O line is important because look at the Bombers. Up until this game tonight. These guys have been a solid, solid unit. Now, we'll get into, obviously, the fact that uh, one of my favorite players, one of the emotional leaders of this team, Jamarcus Hardrick, is out. Uh, you know, and they got uh, Asatui Louie playing uh, Eli. He's playing. Oh, I'm sorry. I just love that name. I like, you know, I'm, I'm a phonic kind you, of guy, you, man. you nailed the hard one. It's Asatui. Yeah, but Asatui Ellie. Asatui Eli. Ellie. Ellie, okay. Yeah. Anyway, he's playing, and he's a big boy. He's having a, you know, he'll play. But anyway. Yeah, he's a go good player. Go back to the situation. Tui Ellie is a good football player. Like, the I don't Bombers think, are stacked. I just want to end this on Trevor Harris. We don't yep. want to spend the whole show on Trevor Harris. But I'll say this about him. Next week will be a very interesting week. It'll be a very interesting week to see what happens with Trevor Harris because he's obviously not happy. We know that for a fact he's not happy. Nobody's happy. Anybody's ever anybody, played this yeah. sport or any sport yeah. who gets demoted, and that's what it is, demoted. Uh, you you know you're on the sideline now. You're not even dressed, so this, it, it, you just can't be happy. So it, a lot of things, a lot of things will take uh, take shape next week after the game, regardless of what happens in this game to, uh, tonight. So anyway, that's my Trevor Harris. Uh, I think we did a good job of talking about it. Uh, now let's move on to wherever you want to go now, DB. Well, besides Christmas. If I am busy, I have to start making my list. Well, yeah, you're you're starting to Santa, get Santa. Look at this letters <laughs> oh, in the mail. Oh, oh. Have yeah. you been a good boy, Darren? <laughs> well, that's up Sorry, to you because you're always watching. I am watching, The man. omnipresent. You're on the, you're on the naughty list right you're the, now. So. You're the omnipresent Chris Wall. Your wife's on the good list for hitting you. Hey, I love the fact that they caught that. <laughs> when I said that your wife was beating you over the head with her clutch bag. <laughs> clutch performer. Yeah, she She's liked on that the one. nice list now. <laughs> 
Uh, All right. It'll be interesting tonight to see how this Edmonton Elks team responds yeah. with everything that has gone on there, not just this past week, but this season. Bombers in Edmonton to face the Elks. Uh, kickoff is at 8 o'clock Central Time tonight. Um, yeah. And these two teams, like we talked about last week, Chris, polar opposites as far as direction yeah. uh, that they're headed. The Bombers eight and one have an opportunity to wrap up a playoff spot. It's nowhere near where their goal is of obviously winning the gray cup, but their goal right now is beyond just making the playoffs. That's almost a foregone conclusion at this point. It's hosting a home playoff game. So this game against Edmonton and then home to BC on October 23rd, that's next Saturday. So in eight days time, um, then their final buy back-to-back against Montreal, and then the Calgary Stampeders uh, in Cowtown to, to wrap up their schedule. Everything is Everything working. Everything is going bomber's way. I mean, obviously, you look at You go to BC, then you got to go to Montreal. Now Montreal, obviously, losing your starting quarterback. They won't play Vernon Adams Jr. Right. Everything is lining up perfectly. I mean, honestly, Except, I, I just hope it's going to be one of those years like Calgary Stampeders. Is that what you're going to say? Well, when no. Calgary went, what, I think 16-2. and two, and end up losing in the playoffs. So, I mean, it's really important that you always build strength. And this, I don't know how much stronger the Bombers can get, to be honest with you right now. They're just playing super uh, super football. Well, the one glaring area, let's call it the elephant in the room, that's their oh God, yes. up and down roller coaster kicking game. What is your take on the faith and belief the Blue Bombers have in Ali Mortada? Bad game? Good game, bad game, and now an opportunity to kick on the road again. This time it's not going to be on an indoor stadium, but maybe uh, a chance for Ali Murtada to finally tighten the screws in his kicking game. Listen, listen there, there's one word that should come when you talk about Ali Murtado. You know what that is? It's redemption. His first game was in Edmonton. He went zero for three. Listen, he's one for seven. There's nobody in the Bombers who have kicked a field goal over 40 yards. Mm-hmm. I th- Oh, there is one. Sorry. Taylor, uh, Tyler Caprina had the only one. No. Mark Leggio had a 50-yarder, his first CFL attempt. Did he make it? He did. Or was it a warm-ups? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, okay. he hit it. I'm his his first that, CFL stats, field goal. Okay. Yeah. That's why I hate stats, because I look at the stats, I didn't see that. But anyway, uh, the, truth, the truth of the matter is, zero for three in Edmonton. Comes outdoors to Winnipeg, goes one for four. He's one for seven outdoors. Now he's going back to the haunted house where he's got to go back to Edmonton and try and redeem himself. That's why I call it the game of redemption. Listen, I I love Coach O'Shea, and I love him because he protects his players. But there comes a time when he's going to have to face and look in the mirror and go, can I live? with whatever happens next. Yeah, I love the fact he says he strikes the ball. It's always straight. It doesn't hook. It doesn't curl. You but know, he, he's just got to get it lined up, right? He's got to Near play misses angle. are worth yeah, zero yeah. points. Exactly. I mean, so, listen, he's one for seven. He's four for ten. So out of, uh, you know, 30 points, you know, he's got, uh, you know, 12. So, I mean, yeah, so they got to fix that. But there's something about him that obviously that O'Shea likes. Well, here, here so let, let me bounce. Really interested to see. Let me float this idea. Does out he there. throw him out today on anything over forty? Because he has not made a forty plus. So now, what do you do? Now you're in a situation. Do you throw him out to try and get rid of that? That you know the jinx on him, and and he makes a forty yarder, and all of a sudden you're like, there it is. Sometimes Maybe. kicks. You know, if you you know you talk to Troy Westwood, the kickers get in cycles, right? Right. And they get in a groove is a better word. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, let me float this idea out there. They have Loaded. faith. They have faith in Ali Mortada. They like his process, his delivery, strikes yeah. the ball, all of that. Is there another option? Like, are they sticking well, with him because they don't have anybody on the other end of the well, phone? What's wrong with the, uh, uh, Krapina? A hamstring. Still, okay. And you know, as a kicker, if you're hamstring, I don't know if it's his plant leg or his kick leg. Well, but this obviously, is, it's tough. This is my take. Just, just my feel of the personnel situation in Winnipeg. If all three kickers were healthy, I think it would still be this pecking order. It would be Mortada, Legio, 
Carpina. I think they like Mark Leggio better than Tyler Carpina. I think him him signing here in Winnipeg late in training well, camp was too, right? it was yeah. a well yeah and it, like I'm just talking field goals. I think it was a stabilizing move to say, "Hey Mark, we know you're struggling. Um no preseason games, all that. Let let's bring in somebody to ease that pressure." Just work on punting, practice your field goal kicking. We're not giving up on you. In, in no way, shape, or form do I think the Blue Bombers have moved on from Mark Leggio being the potential future of this team. You got to win that job. But so right now, no, that, right, so right you're, now, you're nobody's telling me that, that Murtado is just a band aid. No, it's it's we we need a kicker, and I I think they like Ali Mortada better than Leggio or Crepinia. If all three were healthy, it would still be this pecking order. Mortada, well, Leggio, Crepinia. And he's got to show something. He's got to show something tonight. He cannot. He cannot go and have an awful kicking Certainly. game tonight. If he does, if, I mean seriously, there's no way that even O'Shea can umbrella this guy one more time. Well, Chris, you you, you can't put the umbrella and keep the rain off, and it's going to happen. Hale's going to hit him. Well, what did he say last game? The Bombers rolled to a thirty to three victory, and asked by Ted Wyman of the Winnipeg Sun, as he should. Uh, what's going on with your kicking game? And he said, look, let, let's focus on the positives here. We want a football. He didn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. Oh, no. Then, then this week during the practice week, O'Shea said, you know, process and strikes the ball clean, all of those same things and that they're sticking with him and that they have faith in him. He asked Ali Mortada what that means to him. He talked about grace. He talked about how it's, it's a rare luxury. We all yes. know it's a rare luxury oh, yeah. that, a team is sticking with a guy this long. If this was the NFL, if, oh, this, was a, if this was a even a CFL team that needed the points and had another option, they probably would, would move on from Ali Murtada. So, you know, third chance here for Murtada after two bad games and one good one on an indoor stadium uh, against the BC Lions a couple of weeks ago. Money's on the line. It's now or never. Do or die yeah. for Ali Mortada tonight. No, I agree. I agree. I mean, he's very, very lucky. And I, I think you're uh, uh, quite apropos when you say that if he was in the NFL, uh, he would have got a, an apple and a roadmap after the first game. So, yeah, you know what? And and maybe, and maybe O'Shea's faith will be rewarded. And maybe. this guy might end up being the thing that, you know, the kicker that O'Shea really believes he can be. But, again... As we said, and both of us agree on this, and I think every fan in Winnipeg and Manitoba says the same thing, then you better show something tonight. No question. Um, and and this is the other part of it too, Chris, is the Bombers haven't needed the points. So that eases the team pressure. Like, you got guys, like, I have no doubt. You have guys in that locker room who are like, oh my gosh, we're sticking with this guy? Like, really? He can't make a field goal. And then you have others that are probably, you know what, I'll worry about my job. He can worry about his, that it's, you know, above their pay grade as far as worrying about those things. Um, there will come a time the Bombers will need those points. There will come a time where they're in a tighter football game. The Calgary Stampeders have won three straight games. They look really good. And late in the year in Calgary, November 20th, like that's kind of like a Grey Cup style date. So imagine the yeah. weather in Calgary for that. And... Like, we got to remember, the Bombers only beat the Stamps by two points here in Winnipeg. What's that game going to be like late in the year when Calgary's making a, a serious push like they are right now? I, I think they're only going to get better. And the thing, their defense is playing very well. They Obviously, uh, Rene Paradis is, is one of the best kickers in the yeah, league, oh, has yeah. been for years. Yeah. I think the scary part is Bo Levi starting to get his game back. After, after, the, the, after everybody was ready to crucify the young man, Get rid of him, trade Bo after a couple of bad well, games. Well, Jake Mayer was looking good. Yeah, he was. And that's a great combo. See, they always have a quarterback uh, situation, a good situation there with Huffnagel and, and Dave Dickinson. But uh, I, I, I watched Bo, and he looked really good. He made some beautiful throws. Obviously, the first throw against Saskatchewan, you know, the big bomb touchdown. Uh, but, yeah, so you're right. Uh, it's it's not where you start. Everybody says it's not where you start, it's where you finish. Will the Bombers clinch the West? Absolutely. I don't. I, unless they have a total collapse, there's no way they don't clinch the West. Uh, I mean, they're going to beat Edmonton. I, I, I'd be very, very surprised if Edmonton. I, you know, I hope Edmonton gives them a game. I mean, obviously, when the the odds maker favor, uh, you know, the Bombers by 14 in somebody else's park, they understand. And you're going with another quarter. You know, you bench your starting quarterback. You got an offensive lineman, Sir Vincent Rogers. He used to be an outstanding offensive lineman, not playing again. He's back on his sixth game again. You made a comment. I'm gonna. I don't know if we made it here off air, and you said it's the same kind of a scenario where 
<clears throat> Sir Vincent Rogers doesn't play for Edmonton. Right. And Jamarcus Hardrick will not play for the Bombers. And I totally disagree. Yeah, I just said it's a wash. You know, like it's, one it's starting not a wash. tackles it's out. It's not a wash. Yeah. See, because here's my point. Sir Vincent Rogers has been hurt for about three years now. He hasn't been able to play a consistent number of games. He pra- Jamarcus like, Hardrick he's practiced- is, the, is, Jamarcus Hardrick is the heartbeat of that offensive line. Patty Newfield is the monster. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Stanley Bryant is just smooth as satin. Iron Man. He just doesn't make mistakes. I mean, Michael Couture and Drew Desjardins, you know, they're just coming up on their own. They're they're playing great. But having said that, the guy that I feel like an emotional leader is 51, Jamarcus Hardrick. He's downfield. He's running. He's screaming. He's picking guys up. He's carrying them. It's infectious. Yeah, he'll be. I, I wonder if they're even, you know what, they might even bring him on the trip. A lot of times they don't. Oh, he will. He oh, yeah. So I have, I have no, Jamarcus Hardrick would not want to miss that game from the sidelines, right? You know, he was, he was active and involved and kind of, you know, a lot of times you can't take those guys on the road. You're only allowed to have so many guys. I mean, could they take them? Yeah. Cause they're chartering. I believe they're chartering. Yep. So you can take anybody, right? They could take you, even though they don't want to take you. No, I don't think so. Uh, like but, you. but you, but you mentioned Jamarcus Hardrick's energy as infectious. <laughs> I think that's the point. He has infected the entire team. Definitely yes. that offensive line group with his energy. So I think they're going to be okay to carry that on. You put in Tui Ellie, who okay. body type yeah. and skill level is going to be just fine. And Pat Newfeld, versatile veteran. He'll be able to kick out to right tackle. They're going to be okay. The reason I called it a wash is that, like, these two offensive lines are not on the same level, right? I, I think it's going to be harder for um, for Edmonton to replace Sir Vincent Rogers. At the same time, he's only practiced twice this year. But they've had to play without him already. So uh, the reason I call it a wash is... Um, I, 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 yeah, I think wash is a bad word. I would say this. I think the changes to Edmonton will hurt them more then the change, even though, and I, I, I really believe, like Jamar, I'm a big fan of Jamarcus Hardrick. Mm-hmm. You lose that emotional thing, but I agree with you. They got so much talent. As a Tui, what's this? Ele, Ele, Ellie, yeah, Ellie. As a Tui, Ellie. As a Tui, Ellie. I could just be doing. I get my. Well, hey, put, put respect on that name. Him and his father are both tribal chiefs. Are you serious? Yes, sir. I did not know that. There's yeah. something to put in my pipe. But anyway, I just think that, uh, sorry about that. No, that's I'm talking about some good English tobacco. <laughs> Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Uh, smoke it. I don't want to, yeah. But having said that, Newfell's played right tackle before. Mm-hmm. And I love the fact that he's getting the respect he deserves. We always said this a couple of years ago, Newfield, you know, should have been an all-star. This guy plays every position. Mm-hmm. I love the fact he's got a mean streak in him. He's like a pit bull. They love him, and they, they, you know, and, and now you bring a guy in, like I say, a right, a right guard as a Tui Ile, who I think is the same mentality. You got Couture, and then you got Desjardins, and like I say, Stanley Bryant. Stanley Bryant, who doesn't say much, he's just a leader by example. Yeah. And obviously, congrats to Stanley from both of us mm-hmm. on his Hunter's game as a bomber. Yeah. Um, he's going to go down as one of the all-time greats, if not one of the greatest. No uh, question. He's, he's actually a stud, so... I, I, I just don't see when you make the changes that Edmonton has done as obviously Kyle Kyle Saxlin goes from the right tackle to the left tackle. Um, you know, uh, Renfro comes in. He hasn't played a number of weeks. You got new guys coming in there, and you're going against, uh, the to me, the best defensive line of football right now in the CFL. Yeah. Uh, Stanley Bryant, great guy, phenomenal football player, no question, future Hall of Famer oh, and an absolute Iron Man. The guy does not miss games. He doesn't even miss practices. Speaking of Hall of Famers and in talking about uh, the line play, Chris, Andrew Harris had his 27th 100-yard yeah. rushing game last week in the win over Edmonton. Uh, he's in his 11th CFL season. He was a CFL top performer as late in that game, the Blue Bombers and Tuielli even said it himself in the huddle. When they could take some knees and just kind of kill the clock, he said, screw that, let's run it. That's good mentality to have for a guy coming off the bench um, and and to start this week. Uh, The Bombers exerted their will over Edmonton when they knew the run was coming. Harris's numbers continued to balloon 
and Winnipeg was just purely dominant with the run game. Tell me what you see in Andrew Harris. I'm seeing vintage 34, yeah. 24. Yeah. I don't know how old he is, but he is running as well today as he ever has. Yeah, listen, he uh, leads the league in yards per game average at 97 something. Uh, obviously, and you know, you talk about that last touchdown drive where he ran it in. It was like a scrum, a rugby scrum when he mm-hmm. pushed him in. Edmonton was defeated already. What I love about the Bombers, and I love about, uh, you know, the guys were talking about running the football instead of taking a knee, is they finally got that killer attitude. They could have took a knee because he had the game handily. Yeah. But they said, you know what, let's make a point. Let's make a point right now of telling them, you don't want to come on the same field as us. And that's what they did. They, they basically pushed Andrew Harris the last three yards into the end zone for a touchdown. So... It's that, uh, it's you that know mental... What? When, I, when I see this, I look at this game and I say, yeah. and you know what, and, and, and how about Winnipeg? They're so polite. They're not giving any fodder. Any, they're not doing any bullet, bullet they don't board need garbage. No. Oh, Edmonton is very good. They get after the passer. They got great guys. They haven't been sacked in two games, the Bombers. I mean, they're dominating. But yet, oh, they've got a good, oh, they're good. I mean, it's, it's like... They, hey, they... They're killing them. You know what it's called? Killing them with kindness. Yeah. Well, this is the way I see it, Chris. It's the mental war. And the Blue Bombers let their action on the field do the talking. You're right. No bulletin board fodder. They don't have to pick up the newspaper, hit the the websites, listen to shows like ours. Uh, The Bombers are the best team in the league. Everybody knows it. And to put a bow on it all... Uh, or, or the cherry on top of it all is that in a game they're kicking the Elks' rears. They're saying yeah. we're still going to run the football down your throat. We're going to say you're a good football team on Tuesday afternoon, but tonight we're going to continue to show just how weak you are compared to us. That's the mental war the Blue Bombers are winning right now. Every other team in the CFL is seeing it. And no doubt, whether it's BC next week, Montreal or Calgary in the remaining games of the season, those opposing clubs are going to look across the field at the white W on those gold helmets and say, oh boy, we got a day uh, ahead of us here. Everybody likes to play the best and the Bombers are the best. I loved what uh, head coach Jamie Elizondo said at the post game. He says, quote unquote, and this is him talking, yep. we were manhandled. We got our asses whooped. That's what he said on all phases of the game. Listen, you look at the last game, they they, they lost the field position game huge. They they gave up three safeties. I mean, they couldn't move the ball out of their own end. I mean, it's terrible. Their offensive production is awful. I mean, the first pass he tried to throw should have been intercepted by Alford. DeAndre Alford just had it in his hands. Nowhere near the receiver. Uh, Darrell Walker, who's one of the best receivers, be a Hall of Famer himself. He's where is he? He hasn't even got a touchdown. This is we're talking nine games into the season, and he has or ten games. He hasn't got a he hasn't got a touchdown. Well, that's I, very I thought rare. The, I thought the best passing play the Edmonton Elks made, I believe it was in the third quarter, and it was Greg Ellingson on a crossing route or or yeah. a, on a deep post, and he makes the catch. You see Trevor Harris's face in the replay, like all yeah. right, and then there came the missile. Adam Big Hill blew up Ellingson, knocked it yeah. incomplete. That's the most, um, you know, deflating thing is Trevor Harris backed up in his own end, can't get anything going offensively through the entirety of the four quarters. And just when things looked like, okay, there's my guy, there's my number one, Greg Ellingson, pulling one in, boom. Out comes the veteran Adam Big Hill to knock it out. 15 possessions the Edmonton Elks had last week here in Winnipeg, Chris. Seven two and outs, two drives of three plays, two drives of four plays, three five play drives. Three times they had five plays on the drive. So they picked up uh, a first down. Then they had one six play drive and only one first down earned on that drive as they went to third down twice before turning it over on downs. Three times they turned it over on downs. Three conceded safeties, an interception, 159 total yards, they yeah. couldn't do anything against Winnipeg. They only had one first down until the middle of the second quarter, which is unheard of. Uh, total domination, total, uh, you know, I mean, these guys, and listen, they have to watch the film. 
They've got to watch this. So they're watching the last two games. I'm talking about the Elks here. They got to go through the film and figure out what they got to do to fix this problem. And if you're in that, if, if you're in that room, and I'm sure this led to a lot of the decision making that uh, Jimmy Alizon, the head coach of the Elks, is doing. Who wants to play? Who's tucking her tail between her legs? Who's giving up? Who doesn't want to tackle? Who doesn't want to be on this team? Well, that might factor you, into the Trevor Harris and decision, maybe right? that is one of the reasons that Trevor Harris isn't playing because there's nothing like a little shock value to wake the rest of the team up. This is what I saw last week. I saw bad body language from players like Darrell Walker. I'm not calling Darrell Walker out. It was a lot of guys on that team, but we were just talking about him. That's why I'll mention that. And then Trevor Harris, like early in the game, it was incompletion after incompletion after incompletion. Uh, If they were able to get more than a a couple plays, I think it was two and outs on their their first uh, three possessions. Yeah, Yeah, it was. Oh gosh, it was four two and outs on their first oh, yeah. four possessions, yeah, and then a, first down. a conceded safety um, in there as well. Pardon me, two conceded safeties uh, in there as well. Trevor Harris did not look good. He had a little bit of time to operate, but he couldn't find his receivers. He couldn't deliver the football um, accurately at all. So it's performance on the field. Maybe it's body language. Maybe it's lack of leadership. Maybe it's a, a trade you know, either asked for or potentially being doled out by the general manager. It could be a variety of things. It's just crazy to think that the Elks still have a month and a half of the season here and they have not been eliminated. Even a loss today will not eliminate Edmonton from the potential playoff picture. And they're not even dressing Trevor Harris. Well, something's cooking in there. Yeah. Well, I, I think the shock value thing, but I also think when a team has lost four in a row, and you get behind the eight ball early. It's like, the, the I can tell you right across the, that, that whole sideline, they're going, here we go again. And they start looking at the clock going, <laughs> how long before we get, you know, on a plane to get out of here? You got to go home, right? Or whatever. Uh, but they got they to change something. Now they're out there saying all the right things. Listen, they're paid to be professional athletes. You expect them to put out a performance. Mm-hmm. If I was a coach and I, and I watched film and I saw a guy quit on a film, that guy wouldn't be on my team. Yeah. Unless he pulled a hammer or something, it was, you know, really drastic where he couldn't, you know, actually participate in that play. But if he was giving up, and that's, that's the worst thing. I don't care about the veterans. I don't care about anything. If you give up on a play, you shouldn't be collecting your pay. You like that little rhyme there, pay for play. But anyway, I like it. But anyway, uh, listen, they haven't changed much. That's the only change that the, uh, the Elks have got. Uh, basically, uh, you know, they got a new long snapper, yeah, and Martin Chad, Bedard, Chad because obviously Chad Rempel, the the guy who's played, the, I think he's uh, started to play with Moses, is out, <laughs> right? So I mean, uh, and, and then you look at the other, they got Darius Williams in now. Uh, they brought a couple other guys in, uh, but it's basically the 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 same roster the Bombers dismantled, aside from losing Sir Vincent on that O line. Well, Taylor- so what changes? What are you going to do? You need to change it. Are the are is, is Edmonton going to say you know what maybe we go to double? You can't listen. We're talking all about the defensive line. We're talking about you know secondary, the Bombers, and the physicality. That's one thing I've noticed. You t- you mentioned earlier with Big Hill. We've seen it already with uh, uh, what do we call Brandon Alexander. Oh yeah, Big got, I've seen a couple sticks from Dietrich Nichols. Well, obviously he had the you know the punt block. I mean. Stoves, Jordan, stoves, be, stoves, beating guys up in the middle too. That's the. This is the issues. The first couple plays, yeah. The bulldozer, the bulldog. He just got in there. I tell you what, Stephen Richardson is a horse in that middle. I didn't realize. I said this last broadcast. Every game he's aggressive. He played, yeah. I didn't think he was that strong, but man, he just manhandled that center and just took him right back past the quarterback, and they had a sack. He disrupts that. You can't run the ball. And yet they have the leading league rusher in there and James Wilder Jr., who I believe is going to get like about a thousand carries this very game well because could, yeah. they're going to have to lean on number 32 to help them if they have any chance to win this football game. Well, but that's the problem is if you continue to just run, 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 the Bombers are going to eat you alive and they're daring Taylor Cornelius to throw the ball. Uh, he's got three yeah. touchdowns and six interceptions this season. I understand a lot of those have come in garbage time, but they've also come late in games when Edmonton is trailing. So call it garbage or call it desperation. Um, either way, tonight in Edmonton, Chris, 
People might be jingling their keys as many Elks fans leave early if this is a big score game like the Vegas odds maker believe it is. Do you have your keys? Yeah, I have some keys here because I always have keys and they don't jingle. Oh, that's, oh, but I am Santa, so I guess they do jingle sometimes. <laughs> so those are your, those are your sleigh bells. You got your keys. That's my game. sleigh bells. <laughs> Easy, Dash, I'll be right out. <laughs> he's, he's, I'm feeding him in the backyard. I think an offense, basically, DB, you got to protect the football. They're doing a great job. They're not giving turnovers. They're, you know, uh, they're basically spreading the football around. And I, I, I look at the games that Andrew Harris has had running the ball against the Elks. So I really believe that Andrew Harris will be getting, a, getting the pigskin quite a bit. Defense. This is a quote from Richie Hall. Make Taylor Cornelius uncomfortable. Make him one-dimensional. If he's going to beat us, make him beat us through the run. We're going to make him so uncomfortable in the pocket, he's going to make mistakes. He's not going to get his progression of reads, so he's got to pressure he's going to get them. And we talked about this, but special teams, boys, boys and girls, it's time for Mr. Ali Mortado to step up. I, for one, I'm in his corner. I'm going to drink a little bit of the O'Shea Kool-Aid today. I'm going to say, Ali, Go out there, have a game of your life. It's about time. Yeah, and Jeff Gray will uh, make his first dress of 2021. Oh, that's another good story for the... Yeah. Is he taking his unicycle? That's right, yeah. Yeah, maybe he'll be uh, riding it on the sidelines to keep warm. I I bet you there's another guy that's pretty happy getting it weird, you know, because, I mean, the guy's handling it pretty good, but uh, he's a pretty good football player, and on probably any other team, he'd be starting. Well, that, that's that's the reality of, of the embarrassment of riches the Blue Bombers have on the yeah. offensive line, really at every position group right now. Um, the last thing I'll add, Chris, that we haven't touched on today is, well, there's Jonathan Rose and there's Aaron Grimes on the boundary side of the Edmonton Elks defense, and they will have their hands full today. It's not just Nick Dembski. They've also got Kenny Lawler back this week to contend with. Leads the CFL in receiving yards coming off that one game suspension following um, the off field incident uh, that he had with yeah. police. And now uh, another weapon added to Zach Kolaris's uh, arsenal. Not so much on Kenny Lawler. I'll ask you more on Zach Kolaris. Uh, he hung it on himself after the game, as well as this week uh, following practice, that he could have been more accurate. With the football, I don't think there's anything to be too concerned about, but Zach Kolaris feels he can be better. Yeah, he was he was 59%, yeah, I, I think. But uh, you're talking about getting his number one guy who leads the league still in receiving in Kenny Lawler. An interesting status. He's got the most 30-yard-plus catches at seven. But the big thing about a guy that makes your drives continue is your second-down conversions. He is number one in the CFL with... 17 second down conversions. He's the guy that, what's it called? Zach Kolaris loves to look for in those second situations, second down situations. So I know he's happy to see, uh, you know, number uh, 89 back in the lineup. And that, and you just talked about it. You hit a thing, a wealth of riches. I mean, they had uh, Ke- uh, Calvin McKnight play there, but he's no Kenny Lawler. He, you know, he played well. But you got Nick Dembski, who I think seriously right now, we're going to have to talk about this next broadcast because. I want to start, we're going to start talking about front runners for some yes, of the awards. Absolutely. It's going to be tough as hell, man. Yeah, it is and going to be, it I, is going I to be like tough. Using, she double hockey sticks on this broadcast, but it's going to be tough. Well, there's even rookies on this Blue Bombers team in, in Dietrich Nichols and DeAndre. Oh, absolutely. You, you mentioned that, you know, Cal Murphy's thing, you, you get a loss for every rookie you start. I think the Blue Bombers are going to shatter that sentiment oh, yeah. this season because they, they've started a handful of rookies this year, Kelvin McKnight and, uh, and, and the like, but um, you know, final thought on this game, Chris, what I see with Trevor Harris out and Taylor Cornelius in, he's big, he's mobile. He's able to extend plays with his legs and he's got a absolutely huge arm. I asked Richie Hall this week, if anybody had a bigger arm than Taylor Cornelius, he said, maybe only Mike Riley. Um, so that's the, the, the danger that Taylor Cornelius poses is the legs, the size he has at, what is he? Six, five, six, six. Um, and, and the big arm, I think the Elks are going to throw the lights out today. I see 40 plus, maybe even upwards of, uh, 45 or 50 pass attempts. If Edmonton's able to stay on the field, it'll get to, to 45, but I think they'll hit at least 40 pass completions today. And it will be more of a check down game instead of a traditional run game uh, to James Wilder Jr. That's what I feel. 
Uh, I kind of agree with you a little bit there. I think they're going to have to, but I'm always, I'm on the other side. I think that James Wilder is going to be a huge thing, whether it's the dump pass, whether it's a screen pass, or just running the ball. Uh, that's one thing. If you have one chink in the armor, the Bombers still give up quite a bit of yards running the football. Mind you, the last two weeks, uh, especially last week when they had uh, Steven, the bulldozer. Sorry, I'm not going to call him. Uh, Richardson back in there. Uh, no, I think it's it, – it, it, it makes a big game, but my prediction right now, Bombers 9-1. I mean, they're eight and one since the first time since 1960, and they're going to be nine and one. Uh, I just, I just can't see them losing this football game. But uh, you know what? Stranger things have happened. So, with that, I'm going to go out and feed the reindeer. Feed, 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 feed. feed. No, I'm not just stuttering. Sorry, feed the reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> Audio issues, uh, no that's longer. No, that's just here, me, man. Uh, on on Bonfire Sports, Chris. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Uh, the conversation right, will continue of this historic Blue Bombers team of just how good they are and expected to absolutely roll, bulldoze, if you will, over the Edmonton oh. Elks uh, today. Uh, thanks for joining us on Bonfire Sports. If you haven't yet, hit like, hit subscribe. What are you waiting for? Get to it and help uh, this free local content uh, that uh, we all enjoy here uh, on YouTube. Thanks, Chris. Have a good weekend. Thanks. Enjoy the game tonight. All right, DB, we'll talk to you soon, brother. Have a say, good one. Say hi to Blitzen for me. All right, Blitzen, oh, he's jealous. Say hi to the wife. Get her a new bag. I, I might have to. There's a big dent in it. <laughs>